Japan's nuclear regulator has urged the operator of the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant to reduce the risk of radioactive leakage in the event of another tsunami. The operator TEPCO must continually inject water into the buildings to cool melted nuclear fuel. And about 60,000 tons of the water is pooling in the basements of the reactor buildings. The Nuclear Regulation Authority instructed the company to urgently study measures on lowering the amount of water and radiation levels. The authority proposed two measures. One is building more tanks to store the water, and the other is treating the water with a system that filters out radioactive material and then recirculating it in the cooling system. TEPCO will report on the results of its study at a meeting next month at the earliest. Japan's State Minister for Industry has ruled out the option of encasing the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant in a structure called a sarcophagus, as was done in Chernobyl. Yosuke Takagi met Fukushima Governor Masao Uchibori. Fukushima residents were very shocked to see the word sarcophagus. My first impression is that it is unacceptable. The government has no intention of using such an option. Takagi said completing the decommissioning process is the top priority and the government's policy is to stand by the people of Fukushima. On Wednesday, the government body in charge of planning the process released its latest report. For the first time, the report mentions the option of locking in radioactive materials with a concrete structure, as was done at the Chernobyl nuclear plant. Officials said they remain committed to removing fuel from the reactors that had meltdowns in the March 2011 accidents. Japanese nuclear officials have scrapped one method they came up with for decommissioning the reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. In response to local opposition, they've ruled out using the technique that was adopted at Chernobyl. The Nuclear Damage Compensation and Decommissioning Facilitation Corporation, or NDF, released a technical report a week ago that mentioned, for the first time, the possibility of employing a Chernobyl-style sarcophagus method. The report faced a backlash from people in Fukushima Prefecture. The revision presented on Wednesday dismisses the option of adopting a sarcophagus method that seals off disabled reactors with nuclear fuel inside. It makes it clear that the method won't be adopted in the Fukushima Daiichi decommissioning process. The wording caused misunderstanding and concern among local residents. The word sarcophagus wasn't used properly in the original document. Local residents were beset with doubts and fears. I want the government and the decommissioning body to carry out the process carefully. An expert pointed out that authorities need to do more to allay local people's concerns. Hiroshi Miyano of the Atomic Energy Society of Japan said the government and the NDF need to clarify the goal of the decommissioning plan and thoroughly explain it to people concerned. Official in charge of nuclear power. Akira Kawano has been an engineer at TEPCO for almost 30 years. He was in charge of safety at Fukushima Daiichi before the accident. Now he supervised the decommissioning process. What do you think the, the most difficult part, the difficult element uh, concerning the decommissioning process? Two <coughs> difficult challenges. Um, the one is uh, how to understand the inside the uh, reactor pressure vessel and the primary containment vessel and to remove the uh, molten fuel debris from the unit one through three. The other challenge uh, is that uh, how to <coughs> cope with uh, waste, it's a liquid waste and uh, solid waste, uh, how to treat them and how to s safely store it uh, for the long time. TEPCO engineers are still trying to understand the situation inside the reactors. They are using fiber optic scopes and closed circuit cameras to gather images of the damage. They are also using computer simulations to determine the condition of the molten fuel. 
but high levels of radiation are slowing things down. Workers can only go into reactor buildings for five to ten minutes at a time. We haven't understood well uh, how those uh, uh, molten field debris are distributed and located. We need to uh, sample the debris and uh, we need to understand the mechanical character characteristics and chemical characteristics of the debris. So otherwise, uh, uh, we cannot develop the uh, necessary tool to remove, re retrieve the debris. I hope we'd like to understand some something about it uh, within a couple of years. It it takes a long time to to. Uh, it's just it's a difficult to uh, achieve it. Can we really say that the uh, decommissioning? process will end within 40 years. It's very difficult to talk about uh, uh, such a far future, but uh, it's really the, uh, takes a time, actually. So even just for the removal of the debris, and it takes uh, 10 years or more, I think. And you know, there are uh, Half-life of the, the, for example, the cesium is uh, 30 years, so at some part of the decommissioning we need to wait, <laughs> the radiation will be reduced. There are different ways to decommission a nuclear plant, but they all involve risks. Given the state of Fukushima Daiichi, Kawano and his team need to account for unprecedented challenges when they choose options. He believes TEPCO executives will have to discuss it with stakeholders and explain the risks of the options before they decide what course of action they should take. We really need to uh, improve our capability of the risk communication in future. That's uh, also our challenge. <laughs> Regarding also the decommissioning, so we need to share that information. Another major issue, as Kawano mentioned, is the toxic waste on site at Fukushima Daiichi. Every day, 400 tons of groundwater seeps into the highly radioactive units. Engineers pump it from buildings and into special tanks. They're in a constant race to build enough storage capacity to prevent any leaks into the environment. It's really impossible just to continuously accumulate that water in the tank. It's not a reasonable way. So we need to think about the possibility of discharge or the other alternative ways, like uh, evaporation or something like that. TEPCO engineers are planning to introduce a new device. They say it's capable of removing all radioactive isotopes from the water. Kawano says the manager needs to talk to local residents in order to decide how to resolve this problem. Looking ahead, engineers have started updating the decommissioning roadmap. The government pledged the entire process would take 40 years. Right now, there is no concrete plan in place to fit that timeline.
1.55 マイクロシーベルトパワーです1.54 マイクロシーベルトパワー5 years from the 福島第一ニュークリアアクシデント郡山シティ福島プリフェクチャージャパン3マイクロシーベルトパワーです。除染の効果を酷使するこの看板には 0.21 マイクロシーベルトパワーとなっています。2016年7月16日福島県郡山市の五百淵公園の遊歩道に来ています遊歩道脇空間の放射線量胸の高さで 0.47 マイクロシーベルトパワーワです1.55 マイクロシーベルトパワーです。1.54 マイクロシーベルトパワー。5 years from the 福島第一ニュークリアアクシデント。郡山シティ福島プリフェクチャージャパン。People in Japan's Fukushima Prefecture had extra reason to enjoy a traditional summer festival this year. Celebrations came days after an evacuation order was lifted. A conch shell helped start a ritual as people dressed as samurai warriors chased unsaddled horses into a shrine compound. Others even caught the horses with their bare hands. Remembering the long road to recovery following the 2011 earthquake, tsunami, and nuclear disaster, locals were upbeat about the future. I hope this ritual will go on forever. I want everybody to come back to this district soon so we can enjoy our life here again. Evacuation orders are still in place in some parts of Fukushima. Some 90,000 people are still waiting to be able to return to their homes.
The number of visitors to Japan in the first six months of this year topped 10 million, a record for a half year period. Officials say more flights and cruise ship visits helped boost the numbers. The Japan Tourism Agency says over 11.7 million people came to the country between January to June. That's up a little over 28% from a year earlier. Visitors from mainland China rose over 40%. Travelers from South Korea were up more than 30%. Total spending by foreign travelers between April and June posted a record for the quarter. But the average expenditure per visitor was down nearly 10% year on year at about $1,500. The figure fell for the second straight quarter. The higher yen slowed demand for expensive items. The Chinese government was also a factor. It increased duties on foreign goods that travelers take home.